questions here. These are the two types of prisms you work on in section 5.3. Rectangular prism, triangular prism. I made this a little bit harder because I didn't give you a, a length that you need, but we can get to that after, right, if you still aren't sure about that. If you want to find the rectangular prism, a couple different approaches you could take, okay? For this, the couple different approaches you can take are you can draw the thing, like actually physically draw the net and then work out the areas of each one if you want to. Or you can just label the sides. I think for some of you, if you realize there's three different types of sides here, right? There's this one, okay? Draw that, you know, draw the net for that thing and then, or even just draw the sides separately and then work out the areas, right? You have that kind of, whoops, that's not the right pen. You have that front side there, the yellow side, okay? That yellow side is, uh, what are the dimensions? 10, 5, right? So you got 10 centimeters this way, 5 centimeters this way. How many of those sides are there? In this shape here, how many are there? There's one on the right and there's one on the left, right? They're on both sides. What's the area of that thing? If you have a rectangle, it's 5 times 10. It's 50 centimeters squared. You can show your work any one of a number of ways as long as it's organized. And we have two of these, right? Two of these. Okay? Then you got this side, right? So you have, how many of those do you have? You could even draw this here. It's a bit skinnier, right? Because it's only 2 times 10, right? The blue one. There's the blue one. You have, this is 10, this is only 2. What's the area of that one? 20, right? 20 centimeters squared. You also have two of these, right? And then you have the this one, right? I'm not going to color in very well, but that one, right? You have the rectangle that's on top. How big is that one? Oops. What are the dimensions of that one? pretty small, right? It's only 5 by 2, 2 centimeters, 5 centimeters. That's the top and the bottom, right? This is the left and the right. This is the front and the back. This is the top and the bottom. You got 2 times 5 there, so that gives us how much altogether? 2 times 5 gives us 10, 10 centimeters squared. If you want the surface area of this, surface area is all of those things added together, right? So if you start by drawing a picture like this, all you have to do down here is say, I have 2 times the yellow one, which is 50, because there's the left and the right, plus I got 2 times 20, plus I have 2 times 10. If you don't like using that dot for times, you can put brackets there to say times, or if you really want to, you can use a time sign, although I want us to stop. You know, we're, you don't use that so much in high school math. So you have two of each of them. So you times them all by two, right? So you got 100, you have 40, and you have 20. If you add that all together, 160, all right? If you're not sure still, if you're not sure still, you're you're just finding the area of all of it. It's like if you're wrapping it with wrapping paper. How much wrapping paper do you need if it doesn't overlap? The second part of that was the harder question. Although the concept is exactly the same. All right? Concept is exactly the same. If we're going to work out the surface area for that, we got to try and either draw a net for the thing or just draw the sides separately. Okay? So what do you have here? You have two. You have two of these. If you're trying to work this out again, if you if you want to draw them all separately, please do draw them separately, right? You have two that are triangles like this, right? So you got something like that, right? You have two of those. You have one that's uh, and that sorry, and that triangle is six times eight, right? So you got two of those. You have one that's uh, which one here? You have one that's the the bottom of the thing, right? 
these are the two triangles. And you have one that's the base. What, what are the dimensions of the rectangle on the bottom? The dimensions of the thing that's sitting on the ground. What are the dimensions? What are they? 11 by 8. It's 11 by 8, right? So if you draw a rectangle over here that's 11 by 8, okay, draw a big rectangle, 11 by 8. You got 8, you have 11. You have another rectangle that's the back, right? The back of the thing. What are the dimensions of the back of the thing? What are they? Somebody else tell me. We got one person who's thinking about it. Maybe more, but you don't want to say. What are the dimensions? It's six feet high. This is a pretty big thing here, right? Six feet high and how wide is it? How wide is it? 11, right? Six by 11. So then write that down over here if you want. You have something that is, you have something that is six by 11. Let's use that again. So you have one that's six by 11 here. Six, 11. And then what's the last one? What's the one I'm missing? I have the I have the base, I have the back, I have the two triangles. I'm missing this one right here, right? That's the one with the missing number. You first of all have to find that missing number. Now that makes it a hard question, okay? So don't feel like if you didn't initially see how to get the 10 that you don't understand any of this. It's not true, right? That's something from chapter 3 if you don't remember. We worked it out earlier here. Pythagorean theorem, right? You have a, you have a right angle triangle here. That. Right? You can work it out by saying, I know that if that's a right angle triangle, 6 squared plus, oops, plus 8 squared is whatever the length of that ramp is squared. So if you work this all out, you got 36 plus 64, you have 100. If that squared is 100, then it's whatever the square root of 100 is, which is 10. Once you know that's 10, then you can draw your last rectangle here, right? You got the biggest rectangle, which is, won't be the biggest one I draw it here, but you have one of these rectangles. It's 10 times 11. If you want, you can work out each of those areas inside the rectangle or beside it or whatever. This is going to be 6 times 8 divided by 2. This is going to be 8 times 11. This is going to be 6 times 11. And this is going to be 10 times 11. You can work them all out separately like that. And then add them all together if that works more for you. The area of this one here, 6 times 8 divided by 2 gives me 24. Right? That's the area of the triangle. This is 88. That's the area of that rectangle. This is 66 and this is 110. We have two of the triangles though. Two of the triangles. So it's not just 2 times, it's not just 24, it's 2 times 24 if we're working this out. So somewhere it would be nice if you said then surface area is 2 times 24 square feet plus 88 square feet because you don't have to times that one because there's only one of them plus 66 square feet plus 110 square feet. So you have each of those, right? Each of those sides. There's five sides. you got to make sure you've accounted for five sides. One, two, three, four. Four, five. I have all five of the sides. So then it should be right here, right? If you add all of that together, what do we get here? 48 plus all of that stuff. What does that give me? 110. Should I look down below? No. What does that give me here? I have uh, 136. 196, 202, is it 312? Anybody agree with that, 312? Somebody want to confirm that, 312? That's how much, if you were building this as a ramp for something, if you're building that ramp, that's how much plywood you would need to make the ramp, right? 